Hi, I'm Hoodie here, and it may not seem like it if you've watched me learn how to build minecart tracks, try to tame animals, or forget to brew alcohol, but I've been playing Dwarf Fortress for a little over a decade. What originally got me into Dwarf Fortress were the crazy stories people would tell about their games, and it makes me happy to have done the same thing for some of you with my videos. That being said, there is a type of comment that I get even more frequently than people telling me about the existence of bins, or that I should be brewing alcohol, and that is people saying something along the lines of, cool story. I wish stuff like this happened in my game. So today I'm stepping slightly outside of my typical format and making a guide slash list of tips for finding the stories in Dwarf Fortress that I hope might be helpful for somebody out there. Tip number one, name your dwarves. I had no clue what I was doing for probably the first five years I played Dwarf Fortress because I never read or watched a tutorial and would just reference the wiki when I wanted to figure out a specific problem. Despite this, I kept coming back for more and that is primarily because I had a built-in story to get attached to, because I would name my starting dwarves after my friends, and they would tell me what they wanted to do in the fort, and I would tell them how they came to an untimely demise. Naming your starting dwarves provides an easy narrative to follow. How are the people who first came to your fort doing 5, 10, 15 years down the line? Instead of having to pay attention to the inner lives of a hundred dwarves, I would instead focus on the relationships, thoughts, and feelings of the only seven that mattered to me. Because of this, their deaths and accomplishments felt more meaningful to me, and that kept me playing the game. Tip number two, embark with a plan. When I first started playing Dwarf Fortress, my plan was always to just survive as long as I could, and see what my dwarves got up to along the way. But as I got better, it got easier and easier to survive if that was my only goal. Now when I embark, I generally have a plan in mind. Build a dark fortress, try to make everyone happy, start a unicorn ranch, all of these were ideas I had going in. Working towards something a little dumb that actively hurts your chances of survival just a little bit can bring a little bit of chaotic fun into the mix. I never would have lined the walls of my unicorn pasture with elf bodies had I not robbed multiple forest retreats of their livestock. Having a plan also invites deviations from the plan, where the game pushes back a little bit and you have to refind your footing. Like when an artifact in a zoosh is driving people mad in the middle of your mountain home attempt. Stories in Dwarf Fortress are a conversation between you and the game, and having a plan gives you something to work with, whether that is the game working with or against you. Tip number three, be a little reckless. Just like all the points on this list, this won't suit the temperament of every player, but for me, there is a reason I put levers next to the bridges they control and provide doors to caverns. I could bury a control room with an immortal necromancer in it under a mile of rock where it'll never be accessed, but that provides less opportunity for chaos. And chaos is almost always what I am looking for in Dwarf Fortress. When I got good enough at Dwarf Fortress that I wasn't concerned about my fort surviving anymore, I had a brief period of not really knowing what it was I should be doing, and looking back my solution was to take risks. Embark in a haunted biome, roleplay a little bit, build in a non-optimal but pleasing way, there are a million ways to just loosen the reins a little bit, and allow the game to do its thing. If I never dug into the caverns, I would have never created a noble killing throne room, and if I hid my levers away, I would have never had the moment of seeing my last dwarf save a cat and himself from a yak skeleton just a few tiles away. Tip number four, read and write. I've saved the most boring for last, but reading the thoughts of dwarves is a lot more pleasing on the eyes now than it used to be, and the same goes for Legends mode. But doing a lot of reading is not always as fun as some of the other things you can do in Dwarf Fortress. Despite this, I would say that the reading is where the depths of Dwarf Fortress are found. This was a more obvious relationship when looking at the graphics felt like reading, but the internal lives of the dwarves are perhaps the most fascinating part of the game, and they can't be accessed unless you do a little reading. On the writing side of this, I found it way easier to keep track of ongoing stories in my fortress since I started making YouTube videos and had to start taking notes to remember what happened when. My two videos on the Goblin Dancer Stozu Rush Tates were uploaded two months apart and had 20 years of Dwarf Fortress history between them. If I hadn't taken note of her and wrote about her in August, there would have been no chance that I would have still remembered her in November, and getting to see her again, one last time before the Steam version came out, was one of my favorite moments in my pre-Steam Dwarf Fortress videos. Ultimately, there are a ton of ways to create and find stories in Dwarf Fortress, and if you have some, feel free to put them in the comments. My tips are just things that have helped me figure out what I want out of Dwarf Fortress over the years. Hopefully they helped some of you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.